put a summary on gambaku.com. If you go right now on gambaku.com, you're going to see the summary of everything that has been discussed from the beginning. I want to give you a summary of what he said, and then I'm going to go into uh, the details of my thoughts on this whole thing. So what Bopo has said is that the current opposition and also the government are failing. So there's need for those in the diaspora to form a government. He has left Zimbabwe, he's no longer going back to Zimbabwe. He has left South Africa, he's now in the UK, and he's no longer going to be going in Zimbabwe. He says he's got a huge number of connections, and he can use these connections together with other Zimbabweans to create a government uh, that is going to take Zimbabwe forward. And this government is something that is too under development. People must understand what is going to happen. It's a government under development. And the other key points that are here is that this idea has freaked out the government. He has been discussing it with some people at high level of the Zimbabwe government. And the Zimbabwe government does not like the idea. The opposition does not like the idea. This includes Nelson Chamisa. Uh, Nelson Chamisa is not in this idea. He has not discussed this with Chamisa because he says he's able to knock at certain doors and Zimbabweans in those places have opened the doors for him. Uh, the other thing that he said is that uh, the, there is a potential for the country to grow, but it cannot grow with people who are inside Zimbabwe because people are afraid. So you can go and look at all these summary uh, points that I've put here. I think I've got another a page over there. Now, let me give you my conclusions. And I'm going to try and get hold of Opo Chungonu. I've got certain things that I do not agree with in terms of what Opo is proposing. And I know that Opo is going to take this very seriously. Firstly, there is no way that you can get anything moving in Zimbabwe without a dialogue. So I see that he does not include any dialogue in everything that he's saying. The moment you start something without a dialogue, I am very reluctant uh, to support it. And let me tell you why. Soon after the elections, I mentioned the government in exile. I mentioned that Chamisa should leave Zimbabwe and form a government in exile. That day, I got a call from a high-ranking security official in the Zimbabwe government. That, that statement that I'd said had been thoroughly analyzed at the highest level of security in Zimbabwe. These guys don't like to hear anything about the government in exile. And if I was, I was going to increase my security dramatically, this is one thing that the Zimbabwe guys, security guys, don't want to hear. If you talk about the government in exile, uh, you are going to be killed. <laughs> so let me fix that spelling mistake there. Uh, government in exile. If you talk about the government in exile, uh, you are going to be killed. Opo forms a government in exile. So let's put away that T. Sorry, guys, I, I was in a hurry when I typed this. So one point is, without dialogue, you are going to bring ZANU-PF into fight mode. They are going to fight you. And I can I suggest right now that Opo increases the security. Secondly, it's correct that there's nothing that can happen in Zimbabwe without the military. You have to include the military. There is no way where Hopo speaks now, where there is the military included in this plan. And thirdly, who are the people behind the plan? Because Hopo speaks about a plan which then doesn't have a day when it's going to start. People should just come on Twitter spaces and discuss where is the contact point, where do people go. So if I was Hopo, I would then call people together so that we can have a proper discussion. Uh, there's something called a steering committee, which will be a real thing. I've approached Nelson Chamisa and his people soon after the elections, and I said to them, we need to form an international desk where 24 hours people will be able to conduct this, the Blue Movement. And I worked a lot very close with the guys in the Blue Movement. The reason why the Blue Movement disintegrated is because it was made up of a few people. And uh, the Mnangaba government, what they did, they brought someone who infiltrated the group and decimated the whole group. I can give you names if I wanted, <laughs> but I won't do it right now. That's how they work. They are going to find a way of decimating whatever opportunity is going to bring up, and it will not come up 
especially if he works with guys in the UK, uh, 99% of the people that are going to call OPPO with the plus four, four numbers, a CIO or account intelligence, they're not going to be normal people. So already he's got a big problem. He needs to work with no more than five people, uh, five to seven people. That is the only number of people that OPPO can work with if he wants to have a successful government in exile. And their security must be extremely high. This is a very dangerous proposition. And I don't think Opo Shingon understands what he's talking about when it comes to the way that the Zimbabwe government hates this government in exile. Then he says he's not attacking CCC and the PF. That's not true. Uh, Opo was just afraid to come out and explain what happened. Who is Mr. Peters? Which law firm has got the money? What is the role of Kodata Guri? All those issues, they did not come out. Opo Chungono did not bring any information today. He was supposed to bring us information on why he was saying Chamisa is, is uh, demobilizing the people together with Ibo Mandaza. That's what they were saying last week. So what Opo has done is he's deflected and avoided the situation, but he stepped into an even more dangerous situation. Uh, what Opo was trying to avoid by avoiding talking about Chamisa he has put himself in a very dangerous topic. I can assure you, you, you will be back here one day when we talk about this. The Zimbabwe guys, intelligence guys, are going to be hunting Oppo right now over the issue of uh, a government in exile. There is nothing that they hate more uh, than the government in exile. If they see that as a threat. They are going to accuse him of working with foreign governments. A lot of people are going to be hunted down. People are going to be hunted down inside and outside the Zimbabwe government. And something big is about to happen. The, the line has been drawn at this point. Whoever has discussed this idea with Hopo is going to be hunted down and is going to be taken out. Already, I've been getting names here as I was sitting here. Uh, people saying this person uh, is, is with Hopo, this person is not. All those names are floating around. So people must just be careful. This is a very dangerous thing. A government in exile is one thing that the Nangaba government hates. And they're going to do everything in their power to crush it. So what is my idea? My idea is, let's go back where we started. Let's start with the dialogue. Dialogue is essential. You cannot do anything without dialogue. Let's start with dialogue. Let's look for a transitional system that will go for between 10 years to 15 years. 2035, we have uh, the end of a transitional system. and 24, we have an election. And during this time, we work on a 50-year strategy, which I've proposed here. I have offered to talk to people like uh, Ibo Mendoza, uh, people like Opo, I've offered to talk to them because they've stepped out now from being journalists and commentators. They are now in the political space. Nothing Opo is going to say going forward is going to be taken as a journalist statement. It's going to be taken as a politician. So what we need to do is don't step back now. So now he needs to move forward, start assembling a small team of between five to 10 people, get funding for security, because very soon uh, people are going to make a move on him. They're going to see that uh, wherever Hopo is, he's going to get many, many security threats uh, from the Zimbabwe government. These guys hate the, the exile government. So for now, that's what I want to say. I don't agree with anything that goes without a dialogue. I believe that a dialogue is essential. And that dialogue must be mediated. So before you talk of anything, any way to go forward in Zimbabwe, there must be dialogue. Our people have suffered enough. We cannot continue to make mistakes. So let us encourage dialogue so that there is peace uh, in the country. And then we go to a transitional authority, a transitional government, which includes what Hopo, some of the elements that Hopo is talking about. But I do not agree with the government outside of Zimbabwe. I believe in homecoming, Zimbabweans going back to our country, not going outside the country. I've said this before. I do not agree with the ideas of Ibu Mandaza of an NTA two to three years, also supported by the diaspora. And I do not agree with the idea of Opo Chungono of a government in exile without dialogue. That is a recipe for disaster. Uh, people will be suggesting that you want to form an army. People will be suggesting that you want to be supported by foreigners. The place to start is dialogue. Nelson Chamisa has expressed himself very clearly on this topic. 
You say that there must be dialogue. Yes, approach Sadak for the dialogue. That is the place to start. If I was Wopol, I would approach uh, the president of Tanzania, uh, President Samia Suluhu Hassan, and start there. The organ of Sadak is a place to start. If that doesn't work, go to the United Nations, go to African Union. Those are the places to go. Not a, a government in exile without a dialogue, because that is a recipe for disaster. So I'm going to stop here. I'll give you guys a chance to digest what has been said. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to do the news. And then uh, in the evening, I'll digest what would have been said. If I'm able to get hold of Hopo, I'll let you guys know. I am happy that there are people who are thinking about how to, how to address the situation. I am appreciative of Hopo's efforts. Although I think that he has been powered down by the attacks over the past week. He wanted to say more, but I think he was covered down uh, by the attacks that came with the attacking Nelson Chamisa. It's, it's very difficult to attack Nelson Chamisa in Zimbabwe. Uh, you get a, a lot of attacks, and I have a feeling you got a lot of those attacks, and he ended up not uh, producing the information that he wanted to produce. This is why I'm saying it's very difficult to deal with politics at the level that Wopo wants to deal with it without a dialogue. If there's a dialogue in the transitional system, we we'll then rebuild our system, we'll rebuild our country. Anything else will result in chaos, especially if the army is not involved. There is no way that you can do anything without the army. And I'll unpack those ideas as you go. Right, I think uh, I'm done here. Let me see if there's any comment of interest. Uh, imagine moving from Chamisa to Hopo with the Gambakwe 50-year plan. No, mine, mine is not a 50 plan, it's a 50 year strategy. There's a difference between a strategy and a plan. A strategy is how you move from one place to another. A plan or an action plan is how you do it. So I, I guess what you, you have to understand. What Hopo is proposing is an action plan. How does it do what it wants to do? What I'm proposing is a strategy. How do we make our country different, compete differently from other country? Uh, high-speed rail, tourism-based economy, planned cities, and two hours between Blawai and Harare, three hours between Harare and Victoria Falls, a railway to Gokwe. Those kind of things that I'm proposing are strategies. What Hopo is proposing is actually how do we do something, we form a government in exile, and we select leaders from all those people who are uh, known and prominent, and we start going to different people and approaching them as a government, shining the light on what's happening in Zimbabwe. That's what Hopo is proposing. It's not a bad idea. There are many different ideas. All I'm saying is that Hopo must understand that he has triggered the security apparatus in Zimbabwe. He must know that they are going to be looking for him. Secondly, he must know that there can be no plan in Zimbabwe without dialogue. There is no one that I've heard who have said there must be an action before dialogue. Nelson Chamisa says dialogue. Ibo Mandaza said there must be a, an international uh, convention of some sort, but Hopo's plan doesn't have any dialogue. It's just Zimbabweans going out and forming their own dialogue, uh, their own government in exile. I don't think that is going to work. I disagree with something that doesn't have a dialogue because a lot of people will get killed. Uh, that is what is just generally going to happen. Uh, if you do that, UK, South Africa, it's infiltrated uh, with ferrets. So those guys are going to get people and they are going to endanger people. Dialogue is essential. And then the third element that I do not agree with is anything that doesn't have people going back home. Homecoming is essential. So for me, if you talk of a plan without homecoming, I become uh, uh, removed from that plan. I, I do not agree with any plan that doesn't have Zimbabweans going back to their own country. Zimbabweans staying outside of the country is not right. Zimbabweans must go back home. So our plans must involve Zimbabweans going home. So I would like to thank all of you. I have put this, uh, the summary here on gambago.com. Go to gambago.com if you don't have time. Quickly read through. Those are rough notes. And then tomorrow, we're going to see if Hopo manages to get hold of me. And also, if Mkoma Jez is able to set up another space to discuss this. There is another space which has been set up tomorrow. I'll share with you, with this space with you. It has also been said by guys who are aligned to Nelson Chamisa. Let's see what they say in response to what Hopo said. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, and I would like to 
thank you all for these three hours and 19 minutes. We'll talk together again tomorrow, 5 a.m., as I give you the news of the day. Thank you very much.